All right, guys, I've been really talking about this technique for years. I've done a number of videos on it, and I think it really drives the point home to show you guys the end result, or at least the results of what it looks like towards the end of the season, because I have tomatoes now that are gonna continue to ripen all the way until frost. They're not gonna stop. I planted these guys as seedlings, um, actually as seeds, in early May. So from early May all the way till November 1st, I have tomato plants in my yard that have produced continually, which I think in all honesty is, uh, is quite a feat if you think about some of the other vegetables that you can grow here in this climate. You have to really continually plant, right? You have to continually keep planting transplants or seeds to ensure yourself a continued harvest because eventually some of these vegetables, these annuals, like right in front of me here are my watermelons and the watermelons are pretty disease resistant, right? The mildew is affecting them, but not really as bad as let's say the, the melons, the cantaloupes, the musk melons. Also, we had some zucchini here. We also had some uh, cucumbers and different things. In terms of your summer crops, as an example, what are your longest lived summer crops? And I would argue, at least here in this climate, it's probably my peppers, it's probably my eggplants, um, and it's probably the watermelon out of all the things that I've grown here. Um, so <clears throat> the tomato, I wouldn't consider in that category. I would actually say that if I'm not growing them vertically like I am, and I was growing them like a bush and they're more natural form, um, I would probably have so much disease at this point of the year, or maybe even um, a couple weeks prior to making this video or a month prior to making this video that my tomatoes would be done. Uh, it would be over for me. And I would only have really only a, a couple solid months of production for my tomatoes and that would be it, right? Whereas these, if you're growing them vertically, they continue to grow. Um, they continue to be disease resistant because what we're doing is here, guys, we're pruning off the bottoms. The bottoms get cleaned up as they grow. So as an example, we prune off anything that has some disease on it that's starting to yellow, starting to get some spots, whatever it is, we take off this lower growth. We also take off the trusses. So any of the prior trusses that the tomato vine had and finished fruiting on, we then clip this off as well. And, and then any leaves up to the next truss. So by doing that, keeping these bottoms of the plants clear, any of the disease leaves, keeping those clear as well, we're then stopping the spread of disease from growing higher. And eventually anything that's up here is just largely unaffected by disease. And all we have to do is keep training them up. And what I do is one little tip here, guys. I get them as high as I can reach, which is, I don't know, about eight feet up here. We'll go about eight feet high and then we'll let them start branching out. Um, just let them do their thing. Because at a certain point of the season, um, you know, they reach this vine, they reach the top of this quite early. I had some that reached the top of this um, as high as I could reach, probably sometime in August. If we planted them in May, they started fruiting mid July. Sometime in August, they reached the top. And then you just let them sprawl out because then you're gonna get that bush like state up at the top and you're gonna get that bush production from many of these different shoots that's gonna come out. And you're gonna end up having a lot of production towards the end of your season, um, not just in the beginning of your season. So uh, that's really been the key for me is that <clears throat> these tomatoes continue to produce all the way until frost. And I think that's really severely underestimated because if I were to just have these tomatoes and plant them once and grow them as a bush, Again, like I said, you know, these tomatoes would probably be done by now. So I would have to continually keep planting those different crops. You know, if it's the tomato, if it's the cucumbers, if it's the squash, you know, the melons, the musk melons, whatever it is, they're gonna have to continually be planting, planted, but these are just one and done. I plant them once, I take care of them as the season progresses, and they're continually more and more productive all the way up until frost. And it's just really a sight. So I'm gonna bring you guys in. And I do, I just, I keep making these videos guys on this topic. 
because I want you guys to understand. I want you to start doing this. I want people to realize that this is not just a thing for farmers. You know, this is a thing that you guys can do at home. If you live in a humid place, it's a really great idea. If your tomatoes suffer from disease, wherever you might be, you know, this is a really great idea. Um, and this is about three vines here, my orange banana worth of production. They're, they're quite productive. It's a, quite a productive heirloom uh, variety, but it does suffer from some blossom end rot. And I do find, however, that by having them this dense, by having so many tomato plants in such a tight space, right, there's a, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 tomato plants in this very small space. There was actually more of them, if you could believe that. Um, and I actually, some of them did end up getting disease. So because they were so tightly packed, Basically, the more stressed plants, the weaker plants got culled out just by nature, and then the strong survived. But it doesn't even matter because it's still a very dense planting. As they get to the top and they start to branch out, it doesn't necessarily matter. But this whole area here, guys, is three feet deep by about four feet wide. So uh, maybe you could say five feet wide. So uh, yeah that would be 15 square feet. In the 15 square feet, I have 14 tomato plants. So that's really about roughly what you want is you want one every square foot. And I had, as an example, like I was saying, I had a much more dense planting than, than that. Um, we went really dense because I had some extra seedlings come up, as you can see. And I just directed them out towards outside the bed to add in a little bit more space and we got more production that way, but again, it was just too dense in here. And what happened was um, we got a lot of blossom end rot on some of the orange banana plants because there's such a high demand, I think, for that calcium that you really, I needed to really amend my soil with some lime and some Epsom salts. And you probably should do that regardless. Uh, with this dense spacing, you really should go heavier on the calcium amendments. Um, and maybe even heavier on the, the fertilizer because it is a higher demand for your soil. But if you get all this right, you know, you do this right from the beginning, I'm, saying, I'm telling you, you just plant your tomatoes once. You don't have to do succession plantings. You get a high productive yield, a higher productive yield, because in this area, I could maybe have two or three tomato plants versus the 14 I have, and the 14 are gonna outproduce the two or three they're going to be less disease prone. They're going to continue to grow all the way until frost. You know, whatever puts out some tomatoes now, like these flowers are just setting. I doubt those will ripen maybe before frost because it is, you know, we're getting towards the end of September right now and our first frost is November 1st. So whatever's forming now probably won't finish, but you know, all of this is going to finish off. I'm going to have plenty of tomatoes just going into the next month. And we've even got, you know, I could show you guys a little close up here of the beef steaks. We still have some pink brandy wines, the heirlooms that they say really don't do well or don't produce a whole lot of fruits. Um, my pink brandy wines have been going strong for, for months. And I have a pretty big cluster down there. I got one right here, one right there. We got some on this vine, a couple on this vine, and then actually one down here. We had to cut some out because not that they were too close, but my figs on this side of the planting were basically shading out um, some of the tomatoes, which is a bit of a shame because uh, I would have probably liked to have had uh, more tomato vines than a couple fig branches. But, you know, it is what it is. And I hope that you guys will try this method. It's really quite simple. We just prune them as we go and you know, trellis them up to these poles. They're 10 foot long EMT poles. You just stick them in the ground and space them one every square foot. So uh, check out our other videos, guys, we've done on this now. It's just, we've documented it so much and it every single year it's a success. So I will talk to you guys soon, all right? Um, take care, hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you guys for the next one.